So another thing that I'd like to give some detail on in uh, this project is how the uh, training data was generated uh, given the original data set. So uh, this project uh, uses the line mod data set. This is a data set that's publicly available uh, and it's used for 60 pose estimation. Uh, so that's contained in this folder. Uh, so using the cat example, uh, I think that the the uh, first we have our set of JPEG images. So uh, so these look like we've gone through and we see just uh, photos from several angles of several uh, sets of objects. This is within the cat folder, so each of those uh, images contains the cat. Um, and then there, for each image, there is a corresponding uh, label file. So uh, these titles match here, or rather the number uh, matches uh, each of the JPEG images that was given. Uh, it gives a file that looks like this. And basically what's contained within this file is uh, these are each set so first, this is a class classification indication. Uh, so four means that uh, this label corresponds to the cat object. And then these are the next, um, I guess it's 18 values, I think, are, uh, um, are sort of a, a means of finding uh, the court, the xy coordinates of uh, nine key points on that object. So that those nine key points corresponding correspond to the eight points of the bounding box and then uh, the centroid as well, so like the very middle of the bounding box. Um, so that's what, that's what each of these mean. The reason that, the, so each of these is a value between zero and one, and that indicates uh, the position in the image of uh, that key point. So it, it, I believe that it was XY format. Uh, let's assume that this means a centroid. This means that this the X uh, coordinate of the centroid is uh, the width of the image. Uh, multiplied by this value, and then the y-coordinate is the height of the image multiplied by this value. So uh, the x-coordinate is slightly to the right of the center here. It's about you know 57 uh, percent of the way of to the right of the image, and then the y-coordinate is about 34 percent of the uh, of the way down the image because uh, the image is um, you know zero zero is the top left of the image, and uh, the, this, uh, the images, the default uh, dimensions are, I think, uh, 640 by 480, so 640 pixels wide, 480 pixels tall. Uh, so that's what those mean. And then there was another value at the end, which I forget exactly what it was, but it wasn't related to the key points, and I didn't use it uh, for uh, this project. So. I don't, don't worry about it, I guess. Um, so that's what the labels uh, mean. And then we also get uh, this, uh, these images here. Uh, so this is pretty uh, self-explanatory, I think. It shows you uh, where the object of interest is in the image. So for the 000 uh, image that we looked at earlier, uh, we can see that that mask uh, corresponds to the cat. You can see like it's perfectly overlaid with that. So uh, here we can take uh, an array and uh, each of these values is 0, 0, 0, each of the black pixels is 0, 0, 0, and then these are all 255, 255, 255 to give us uh, the white image. So now that we know what our uh, default data looks like, we can use that to uh, generate our actual training data. Um, so for the, to generate training data, uh, I, um, I'm using generators. Uh, generators in Python, they're a method of, uh, so you can pass these to the TensorFlow um, fit and eval functions, and what it does is it uh, kind of serves the training data uh, as it's needed. So rather than, you know, loading, um, you know, a thousand images at once or whatever, which is basically, unless you have like some supercomputer RAM stuff, you're not going to want to do, uh, and you're probably not going to want to do it anyway, because there's just no good reason to do that. Um, so you would use, uh, you can use a generator. And what a generator does, it's kind of like, it's sort of like an, an object. It has this like internal iterator here. So let's look at the uh, combined training generator here. Uh, it has this like internal iter iterator that I have with I, uh, and that's sort of being used to uh, keep track of where it is in the folder. Um, okay, so a little bit about these generators. I have uh, three different uh, generators created for this project. Um, that is because there's three different types of models that I used uh, in the project. Uh, one, I have that like com combined output. So if we look here at the um, at the diagram that we looked at earlier, uh, you can see that in PVNet. Uh, the you know their their implementation of it the one model uh, outputs these two uh, you know output arrays 
uh, of predictions. Uh, so basically, I, I have models that do that, but I also have models that uh, output just one of these, and then you can kind of combine them, combine their results to uh, um, to find your key points and to do the rest of like the ransack process and the PNP process. So uh, I actually got better results using separate models. Uh, so and um, the ransack voting was the more time-intensive process with, uh, in my implementation of this project, so I thought it made sense to just like split up the models. Um, but we can also use the combined models. So basically, uh, the reason that that's relevant is because the combined uh, training generator, as one might assume, uh, gives um, the combined training data. So it gives training data for both uh, the semantic labeling and for the unit vector generation. Whereas I also have a class training generator and a coords training generator, which I only output uh, either in the place of the class training generator, it outputs the image segmentation, uh, so this one, and then the other one outputs uh, the coords training generator, which uh, outputs the, um, the unit vectors. Um, so I'm not sure if it's really worth going through the code here line by line. That kind of seems uh, tiresome. Okay, so I've decided that it probably is worth it to go through uh, one of these, the combined uh, generator uh, function and describe what it does. Um, so first off, uh, we get our base path here. So our base path is, in the case of the cat uh, object, uh, our base path leads us here. Um, so we have access to our JPEG images folder, our labels folder, and our mask folder. Uh, so here uh, we're taking, we're getting a master list. A master list is basically a list of the uh, file values. So the, so an example of an entry on that list would be like the 000 JP, JPEG, and then this one, the zero text, and then also whatever it is for the mask PNG. Um, so uh, it's just a list of um, a list of lists, and the uh, the list within the list is those three values, those three file names. Um, and so the reason that uh, we can we have a master list, uh, we can either read it and get the entire thing, or we can pass one. Uh, the reason that you can pass one is I actually did like uh, eventually later in the project I implemented data splitting. So for the uh, for the fit. A generator you can pass your training data and then for the eval generator you can pass uh, your validation data and just keep those separate and get you know like more legitimate results uh, that way uh, so I eventually to do that I guess I can come back to that uh, either later in the section of the video or yeah whatever um, anyway so just a general um, the structure of generators. Uh, so we have our internal iterator right here. Uh, this is going to keep track of where we are in the master list. We're like loading, you know, like one JPEG image at a time, and then the corresponding mask and label data. And then within this while true loop, so this while true loop, like would never, uh, you would never escape from, uh, and you just uh, continually hit uh, this yield. So the yield is kind of like the magic, you know, keyword that turns this into a generator. Um, so that gives uh, one batch of values. But uh, it also then, when we call the generator next, uh, it just continues from there, stays within the while true loop, and does uh, does this section of the code over and over again. So this is kind of like the initialization of the generator that happens the very first time that you make it. And then uh, when we're actually calling the generator, we're just going through this while true part here. So uh, what it does is it returns um, an X, so our X batch, that's like our input, and then it returns uh, two values in the uh, as the outputs. So we have uh, because this is the combined generator, uh, we're outputting the unit vector batch, and we're outputting the uh, the class information batch. Uh, so we have for range and batch size. Uh, first, there's this section here in which uh, we check if uh, we have whether our internal iterator, which is getting incremented at the end of every loop, we're checking if that we've reached the end of our list. And if we have, then we uh, reset the internal iterator and uh, uh, shuffle uh, the the list of data that we're working with. So that's how, that's what's used uh, over several epochs. You're not hitting the same image, images in the same order, even though I don't think it would really matter if you were. But it's usually a good idea to just like keep things random in uh, machine learning. Um, okay, so we're loading our input uh, data. Our input data is the JPEG image. So for there, we have this file path to array function. Essentially, what that's doing is you know it's reading the pixels. So uh, an RGB uh, image has a uh, three. Uh, has three values for each pixel. So we have uh, 480 by 640 by three 
uh, uh, NumPy array being returned here in our x value. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because it's, it's like fairly straightforward, just like Python. Uh, then we, we're checking our label. So for this, this is when we're using our master list. You can see we're accessing one of the indexes of the master list entry that we're on right now. Uh, we're, ac we're also accessing the corresponding label value, and we are reading reading that one line and uh, grabbing 18 of the values. So that's for the uh, the nine coordinates. We're grabbing an X and a Y value for each of them. And uh, for the class labels, we're also... So we're creating these two... These are going to be our output arrays here. Uh, so we're creating just uh, zeros uh, arrays, so arrays that are completely empty, filled with zeros, uh, that in this case... Uh, so we have the height and the width and then the 18 uh, coordinate uh, values that we're using. Or sorry, the nine coordinate values that we're using for each, and each one has an x and a y value. And then for our class labels, we just have uh, zeros and uh, just one value, uh, which will be either a zero or a one, depending on whether the object is there or not. So then we grab our model mask, much in the same, in the exact same way that we do with our JPEG image. Uh, we're just grabbing PNG and uh, getting an array that either so. Those values, as I said earlier, are all 000 or 255, 255, 255, uh, depending on whether the object is there or not. So that is what is happening there, uh, right here. Uh, so we have this if augmentation. Uh, I also put in some basic uh, data augmentation to see how that would affect uh, the model you know, performance over time. So uh, I'll, we can get to that when we start talking about the results. But uh, what it's doing here is it's just uh, flipping um, so for it'll flip uh, the input array vertically, it'll flip uh, the model mask vertically, and then for each of the labels, it will take the, um, I'm not sure what the mathematical term for this is, but let's say that, you know, the value is 0.25, then uh, the value that we returned is 0.75, so it's 1 minus the current value. Uh, so that's how you kind of invert it. So if you imagine, you know, if the uh, x-coordinate that we're interested in is 75% of the way across the image, if we want to flip it, then it would be 25% of, of the way across the image. So that's that's what's happening here in this, in this line. Uh, we're just changing the labels data directly. Um, so that's what's happening there. Uh, so when we start actually generating our label data, we take uh, this model coords, and this is where the model mask value is equal to 55. So that's where the object is being labeled. Uh, we're interested in the first two coordinates there. That's the, uh, the y and the x values in that order. Um, and then we are zipping those two values. Uh, the reason that we have this three slice here is because it returns each of the y and the x coordinates three times a piece because there are three 255 values within uh, each uh, x and y coordinate, if that makes sense. Um, and then given those, those y and x values, uh, we are now setting the training pixel. And uh, we're also saying that y class labels at that y and that x value equals 1. So this is where, so the y class labels is our class output. Uh, this is where that gets set to 1. It's originally just an array full of zeros. Uh, and that's getting set to indicate that the object is there. And then the set training pixel function is a little more complex. Uh, but basically, for we take we're taking the labels as an input. Uh, we're taking our our output array as an input, the height, the width, and then the model coordinate. And then we're saying for that coordinate, we're finding the difference uh, between. Um, so we're this is where we calculate the actual pixel value. That we're interested in from that label file, and uh, we find the difference between that and the uh, and our input uh, y and x values, and then we're finding the magnitude of the difference, and then using that uh, we can uh, generate our unit vectors. So here we get the y difference over the magnitude and the x difference over the total magnitude, and uh, that's being set so on our out image object. Uh, which is this y coordinates labels. Uh, so we're appending everything to our batch values. So in this one, I think I use batch values of two. So it just iterates through here twice, and then it yields uh, a NumPy array for the x batch. And then similarly, uh, you can for when you have multiple outputs, you can pass back a dictionary, and this contains uh, so the y coordinate values, and the y class batch values. Um, the reason that, so I'm not going to describe the other generators in the same detail because they are basically the same thing with a couple lines missing for the chords generator. You know, it's just missing the class uh, generator stuff, and similarly for the class generator, it's just missing the chords uh, generator stuff, so there's no need to go through those. 
Um, yeah. So I think that's all we need for that section.